Okay, so back on the slide where we were talking about the different modalities of delivering information. I use the underscore term LMS or learning management system. One of the questions I get most often is how do I drive adoption with a tool like this with my faculty members? And because I have faculty members here, I don't want us to shirk that. I mean, guys, ladies, we're asking them to do 50,000 things, and many times we're handing them 50,000 tools to do those 50,000 things. We got to cease that, okay? We need to meet our educators and our learners where they already are, and for a great portion, especially at the university level, for a huge portion of them, they're living inside this learning management system. It's where they have their syllabus. It's where they have their quizzes. It's where they have their uh, assignments. All of those things live inside their learning management system. Now, if you're interested as a techie in what I'm about to talk about, I'm actually going to go out here real quick and put this link inside the WebEx team space for our meeting so you guys can uh, take it. Sarah, just put this over into the chat so folks can reference it if you don't mind. And for those of you who want all of this content, because this content is going to be not just while we're together, but it's going to be me adding content after the fact. If you want it, let Sarah or let Dahlia know, and they will add you to this uh, WebEx team space. Again, that's a flavor of WebEx. So if we want to meet teachers where they are, we got to get it plugged into where they live. So check this out. Inside Canvas now, I as a faculty member have the ability to determine not, I don't really care about what flavor of WebEx I'm using. What I really care about is how I'm going to use it. So option two there is virtual meetings. That's, that's the live classes I teach. Do I want to use this to teach live classes? Now, before I go any further, right now we're in a distributed learning model. Uh, and one of the teachers I thought did such a great job the other day when she asked me this question. She said, so Lance, typically I've got 30 learners in one environment where I control every aspect of the environment, the temperature, the lighting, what they can see, where they're seated and everything else. Now I have 30 learners in 30 environments where I cannot control a single thing about their environment, right? How am I gonna do that? In this world that we are in COVID-19, virtual meetings allows us to manage all the way down to the expulsion of a student, what they can and can't do as if we're standing in a room with them, okay? Now having said that, in a non-COVID world, I would strongly encourage you as a faculty member to explore the BYOD, the one-to-one -one engagement in your classroom to say, hey, how can I repurpose virtual meetings or virtual classes and use the same tool in my live classes? For things as basic as I need you to be able to see it on your local glass, to be able to hold it up to your face and see it. I need to be able to have these 30 people subdivided into six different groups and stay in their chairs without ever leaving their seats go, and I want to be able to see everything that's going on. That's classroom collaboration, okay? I need to be able to have a standardized way to have office hours with individual learners, and we can use this tool whether we're in a COVID situation or not. Now, that, it may not be you, and that may be a little extreme, but I got to tell you what I heard the other day about Oklahoma. We're already discussing what we're calling toggling the learning environment. Let me define that for you. That means we may start all together here at the school and then we may toggle based on an outbreak to remote for a couple weeks and then we may toggle back to school as the outbreak dies down and then we may toggle back to distributed learning. If that's the world I'm going to find myself in, guaranteed I'm going to use the same tool for my local and remote experiences so I got a groove on and there's consistency in the way the learners engage with me and do it all through your learning management system, okay? So now I have ticked these features, and there's a lot of other things down through here. I don't, I'm not gonna try to bore you to tears here, but just so you know, one of the things a teacher asked me the other day is, how do we take attendance? He said, you know, I got 70 learners, and I can't even get 70 learners on my screen at one time, regardless of the tool I'm using. I need this thing to take attendance. And I said, well, you can take attendance like this, or you can even assign a grade based on attendance. I mean, you can put it in a zero weighted category and not give them a grade, but that's a part of the built-in process to the LMS. 
In the COVID situation I find myself in, 40% of my learners don't even have internet access. So what we're trying to do is push them notifications as to when class is going to start. So the bare minimum, they know they can dial in. I, as a teacher, don't have time to push notifications to learners. That's the job of the LMS plugin. That's why we do this, right? So all of the things that would help me transition to this are built into this plugin and this plugin is no cost to you it's not like you buy a webex subscription that you know, turn around and buy the plugin for your lms the link that i gave you walks you if you already have a webex subscription and you already have a learning management system and by the way if you don't have a webex subscription i think doll you just right up front said hey we can help you with that i mean so reach out to one of these ladies that are on this call and say hey Get a brother or sister hooked up for 90 or 120 days so we can at least play with this stuff. Dolly will be right on it. Sarah will be right on it. They'll get you propped up, and you can plug it right into the LMS you already live in. And that, that link I gave you is the actual link to do that. Okay, so the teacher's got it set up. They know what they want to do with this. How do they operate it? How difficult is this to do? Well, here we go. I'm going to hit virtual meetings. These are my classes, remember? Virtual meetings equals classes, which is large group instruction. I'm going to hit new meeting. Come in here and I'm going to say this is the um, live class session. It's going to start today, April 30th. This is how long it's going to go. And I can verify, change that. Here are my different flavors of WebEx. And these flavors are beyond the scope of today's live engagement. But one of the links that Sarah put inside the chat was want to get started with different flavors, here's how to. So scroll up just a little bit in the chat and you'll see the link and you'll see all the different flavors. You'll see teams, you'll see training, you'll see events, you'll see meetings. You can click on any of those and there's a series of videos for you right now to go access and go through how you operate those. So you choose the flavor. I'm sorry. Dr. Ford, we have a yeah. question regarding flavors. So. Um, Derek said, we have WebEx meetings and WebEx Teams desktop app installed on all of our user machines. We have WebEx boards on our school site, but we've been using the meeting app instead of Teams. Which is okay. better? If we only use one or both or et cetera. So this is the right tool for the right task at the right time, Derek, conversation. Um, and again, my Cisco brethren may beg to differ, but you're hearing this from the classroom teacher who gets to live the nightmare. I mean, the opportunity, right? <laughs> the virtual meetings, okay, which is WebEx meetings, as you see. WebEx meetings gives me maximum control down to the individual user of you're muted, you're unmuted. You can share, you can't share. Um, you've unmute yourself one too many times, I'm sending you out to the hall. In WebEx Ease, it's called the lobby, right? Then I'll let you cool off and I bring you back into class in five minutes, just like I normally would. Okay, it's the flavor that allows me to say, "Listen, I've sent you the hall twice. You're expelled. Once I expel you, you're to the principal's office, right?" And there are records of all of that. So the WebEx Meetings platform gives me what I would call micromanaging capabilities in my classroom. The WebEx Teams platform, and I'm a Southeast Oklahoma boy, when I'm not dressed like this, I'm in Carhartt on a John Deere tractor. So forgive my isms, okay? WebEx Teams is campfire come to Jesus, okay? We're all sitting around a campfire. I'm the teacher, sometimes I'm the learner. You're the learner, sometimes you're the teacher. I start drawing something, you, th you have a brilliant idea as to how you think it should go, and you just jump right in and go. I'm messaging, communicating like this, and all of a sudden you're like, no, I don't agree with that, okay? In WebEx meetings, I can say, you can't message right now. You can't message at all. You can message him, but you can't message her. In the WebEx campfire, I've come to Jesus experience of Teams, you message when you want to message. Now, granted, in Teams, I can flip a toggle and say, okay, this is locked, this is announcements only, and it turns into a broadcast modality. I can do that. But the forte of Teams, to me, is the small group instruction. And so once I, I'm just going to go ahead and create this real quick. I'm going to choose a couple of things and say this is going to happen on uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays from now. Let me scroll down just a little bit, just so you can see how this works. Okay, scroll down a little bit, so it's going to roll from now to the end of my semester, which is the 29th, boom, and create. Okay, so now I have literally created 
the live class meeting session every Tuesday and Thursday from now to the end of May. You just watch me do it. If I hit record as a part of one of these scheduled things, underneath past meetings, that recording automatically appears. In fact, I'm working with the folks in Orange County right this second with a friend of mine named Mary. Let me go back here. Um, what am I doing? Virtual meetings, past meetings. Okay, so here are the past meetings from some of these trainings. And you see where the recording button was hit? There's actually on-demand recordings. I don't want to interrupt anybody else who else is teaching in here, so I don't want to interrupt their flow. So I'm going to come down to the one I taught. Here's the on-demand recording. But right here, if I click join this one, since I was the teacher of this, check it out. I have the entire who showed up roster and what time they showed up all in the LMS, all right here for me. So that, that is WebEx meetings. Now, to your point on WebEx Teams, I have the ability to say, we're in a live class. Now it's time to have our small group sessions. This is where we're gonna do digital portfolios. This is where we're gonna do project-based learning. And the reason we're gonna do it here, as opposed to some breakout session in a live engagement, is because all of my small group projects expand beyond the confines of 9 to 9.50 on Tuesday and Thursday. I mean, I know that's not the case for everybody. Some teachers, somehow, they're better time managers than me, can get all their group work done while they're in class. If that's you, bully for you. That, you're a much better teacher than I. When I do small group work, it ebbs and flows between live class, after class, which then becomes before the next class, and then back together. Until I had classroom collaboration, the only way my learners could do that was exchange personal information, cell phone numbers, Skype handles, FaceTime numbers, Twitter handles, and they would have to personally do this. I got a lot of students now who don't want to exchange personal information with other students in their class, okay? So having this opportunity built into the LMS where they can work in these small groups and most importantly, where I can see their work, why is that important? I think it goes without saying, but I'm gonna say it anyway. Sometimes I'll have a, a learner come up to me and say, you know, Susie's in my group and she hasn't contributed at all. This entire time, she hasn't done anything, she hasn't come to any live meetings, Blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, what are you using? Well, we're, we're exchanging all this stuff in this particular Google Drive doc, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, unless you share that with me, I can't get into it. I can't even know. Here, I can proactively see who said what when. I can see when you had a live engagement. I have a roster of those live engagements. So I can deal with those situations before they fester, I guess is the way I would say it. And just taking it to the other extreme here, sometimes people are, feel empowered behind a keyboard to say things that they wouldn't otherwise say face-to-face. -face. If they drop an F-bomb in here or call somebody out a name or whatever, even if they delete it, my compliance officer can undelete it and tell you the date, the time, and the person who actually said it. They upload an inappropriate file thinking, oh, this is going to be cute, and then they delete it, right? Huh? compliance officer undeletes it. So having them work in this environment allows me to put, my kids were little, we go to the bowling alley, we drop the little rubber thing so they can always feel like they at least hit one pin, right? It allows me to drop the bumpers on my class and keep the ball moving down the bowling alley on the specific topic that we need to cover. So that's how I'm using those two tools in conjunction with each other. I realize you have two different clients downloaded and if your teachers and students have got a handle on that, that is awesome. A lot of the folks who are in total panic mode right now, if I threw them two clients, they'd just be doing one of these numbers, right? So putting it all in the LMS minus a client name and just saying, hey, you're in live class, hey, you're in small group, seems to resonate. I hope that was not too long of an explanation, but I, I wanted you to see how it actually works and not just trust me kind of deal.